Seattle's booming tech scene has turned the city into one of the most attractive places to live in the U.S. Every week, about 1,000 new people move to Seattle, thanks to giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and Starbucks calling it home. But all of these newbies need a way to get around, and it's making things crowded. To tackle the growing pains, Seattle's been working hard on expanding its rail system. The latest push, Sound Transit 3, plans to invest $54 billion over the next 25 years to grow the network work five times its current size. And with the current $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill, cities across the United States are getting a fresh shot at revamping their public transit, with Seattle's expansion possibly being one of the most ambitious. From 2010 to 2020, Seattle's population jumped by 21%, making it one of the most fastest growing cities in the country. By 2040, it's expected that another 800,000 people will move in. While this growth has been great for the economy, it's also brought some big challenges. Before the pandemic, Seattle's traffic was among the worst in the nation, and with more people, housing prices have skyrocketed. This not only makes it tough for residents, but also for the construction workers who are trying to keep up with building all these new homes. And the ones who are around often find it hard to secure an affordable place in the city by themselves. Enter Sound Transit. Established in 1993, the Regional Transit Authority has been building out Seattle's public transport system for decades. It was set up with a clear mission, build a regional mass transit system, but it didn't take off right away. After a failed ballot in 1995, the Sound Move plan got the green light from voters in 1996, kickstarting the development of a $3.9 billion network light rail commuter rail, and express buses. The rollout began in 1999 with Sound Transit express buses, followed by Sound or commuter rail services to Tacoma in 2000 and Everett in 2003. Light rail service first launched in Tacoma in 2003, and Central Link connected downtown Seattle to Seattle Tacoma International Airport in 2009. However, the early 2000s brought funding challenges that scaled the light rail down from the planned 23 miles to 16, with the University Link extension finally opening in 2016. In 2007, Sound Transit proposed a second expansion phase, Sound Transit 2, to complete the original deferred light rail segments and further extend into the suburbs. It was bundled with a broader $47 billion transportation measure, which included highway expansions that didn't sit well with environmental groups and local leaders, and that led to its rejection. But in 2008, a scaled-back $17.9 billion version passed, promising 34 more miles of light rail to key hubs like Linwood, the Microsoft campus in Redmond, and Northern Federal Way. The Great Recession hit Sound Transit 2's funding hard, leading to project delays and a scaled-back vision in 2010. For example, the Federal Way extension was cut short to South 200th Street in SeaTac, while East Link to Bellevue and Redmond got pushed to 2023. Though process has been steady, construction setbacks and rising costs have delayed major projects like Linwood Link and East Link, pushing completion into the early 2020s. Planning for a third phase of transit expansion, known as Sound Transit 3 or ST3, started back in 2008 with $82 million set aside from Sound Transit 2. The goal is to explore several potential corridors for new transit lines, including routes from Linwood to Everett, South Bellevue to Issaquah, and other key areas like Ballard, West Seattle, and Renton. One standout study was the Ballard Downtown Seattle Corridor, which got a closer look in 2013 through a joint effort with Seattle City Government, exploring both light rail and streetcar options. In 2013, the Sound Transit Board approved additional high-capacity transit studies and have updated its long-range plan, setting the stage for what would eventually become ST3. By December 2014, they recommended extending light rail to new areas like Painfield and Everett, West Seattle, Issaquah, and Tacoma Mall, adding to the existing plans from 2005. By October 2014, Sound Transit rolled out a $15 billion proposal for ST3, which included ambitious light rail expansions to Everett, Tacoma, Issaquah, Ballard, and West Seattle. In November, the Sound Transit Board agreed to pursue new taxes to support the 2016 ballot measure, needing a nod from the Washington State Legislature to proceed. Although there was some pushback from the state Senate to limit the package to $11 billion, a full $15 billion cap was approved in July 2015 as part of a larger statewide transportation deal. As part of the compromise, a sales tax of 3.25% would be levied on construction materials, bringing in $520 million for state highway funds.
The final planning for ST3 started in mid-2015, involving extensive public consultation, which included feedback from several respondents. This helped shape the final list of projects, which expanded to include previously excluded corridors, such as State Route 522. By December, Sound Transit presented three package options, a 15-year, $26 billion plan with surface-level lines between Ballard and West Seattle, a 20-year, $30 billion plan, including a new downtown tunnel, and a 25-year, $48 billion plan with a more extensive downtown tunnel for Ballard. Each option reflected a different level of commitment and funding, allowing the public and the board to weigh in on the city's future transit landscape. In March 2016, Sound Transit released a draft plan for its third expansion phase, ST3, proposing a $50 billion, 25-year system overhaul. The plan aimed to expand Seattle's light rail network to 108 miles with 75 stations, introduce two bus rapid transit lines, and extend commuter rail service, all set to roll out between 2024 and 2041. This draft also includes studies for provisional light rail lines connecting Ballard to the University District, West Seattle to Burien, and suburban extension places like Kirkland and North Everett. However, the long timelines for some projects drew criticism, especially from politicians and community groups set to receive service in the 2030s and 40s. In response, alternative routes were suggested to better serve areas like Inner Bay and Painfield and Everett. By 2016, Sound Transit adjusted its plans, proposing to speed up project timelines using an additional $4 billion in bonds, which wouldn't affect the current tax rates. The revised plan included a new light rail in downtown Seattle to ease congestion as the network expanded. Additional infill stations were added along existing and future lines, plus a short spur to South Kirkland. This updated plan was approved by the South Transit Board in June 2016 and put on the ballot as Regional Proposition 1 in November. If fully implemented, ST3 would stretch the region's link light rail system to 116 miles, adding more infrastructure with two new bus rapid transit lines and extended commuter rail services. By 2040, Sound Transit expects daily ridership to reach between 561,000 and 695,000, with nearly 70% of all transit trips relying on rail. ST3's light rail component includes 62 new miles of track serving 37 stations, with trains running up to 20 hours a day and as frequently as every three to six minutes during peak times. Major projects include extensions from Redmond Technology Station to downtown Redmond and Kent Des Moines to Federal Way, both expected by the end of the year. By 2030, routes will extend to Tacoma Dome, West Seattle, and a new line to Ballard via South Lake Union and Lower Queen Anne. A second downtown light rail tunnel and the Linwood to Everett extension via Painfield are expected by 2035 and 36, respectively. The South Kirkland to Issaquah line is scheduled for completion in 2041, with construction on major extensions starting in the late 2020s. The plan also funds infill stations at Graham Street, Northeast 130th Street, and Boeing Access Road set to open by 2031 and extends the Tacoma Link to the Tacoma Community College by 2039. The bus component of ST3 introduces two rapid transit lines, one on Interstate 405 from Burien to Linwood and another on State Route 522 from Shoreline to Woodenville, both launching in 2024. Notably, the I-405 project includes a major station in Northeast 85th Street in Kirkland, expected to cost up to $300 million due to the complex interchange rebuild. ST3 also includes operational funds for existing South Transit Express buses, improvements for bus reliability, investment in Seattle's rapid ride lines, and contributions to Pierce Transit's BRT project in Tacoma. For commuter rail, ST3 will extend Sounder service to Tillicum from Dew Point by 2036, add capacity for longer trains, potentially increase service frequencies, and expand parking along the North Line. Other key elements include future planning funds, high-capacity transit studies, and programs for transit-oriented development, aiming to make use of surplus land near stations for housing and other developments. Over 8,500 new park and ride spaces will be added, primarily in suburban areas, to support the growing transit network and encourage alternative modes of access like biking and ride-sharing. Sound Transit 3 hasn't been without its critics, though, even from those who generally support the idea of expanding Seattle's transit system. In 2016, the Seattle Times editorial board slammed the plan as too soon and too expensive, likening it to giving Sound Transit a blank check. With an estimated cost of $54 billion in year of expenditure dollars, ST3 was seen as costly compared to similar projects in other cities. 
Moreover, some critics pointed out that the plan didn't explicitly promise to reduce congestion. Sound Transit instead framed light rail as an alternative to driving, not a direct solution to traffic issues. After the draft plan was unveiled in March 2016, showing light rail extensions to Everett and Tacoma completed no sooner than 2041, there was a lot of pushback from politicians demanding faster timelines. While these concerns were eventually addressed with adjusted deadlines, other elements faced criticism too. For example, the inclusion of the $980 million park for ride facilities drew ire from Seattle and Mets Public Cola, though this was later reduced to 661 mil with plans to charge reasonable parking fees to manage demand and use revenues for non-motorized system access improvements. Leading up to the election, Sound Transit faced controversies over its outreach efforts. A misleading survey question flagged by the state's Public Disclosure Commission as a violation of state laws had to be pulled. Additionally, during the final planning stages, a write-in campaign succeeded in placing conservative activist Tim Eyman on the committee drafting the opposition statement, causing discontent among critics of ST3 who felt that the selection process should have been different. In another misstep, Sound Transit was found to have improperly released 173,000 emails of ORCA cardholders to the pro-campaign group Mass Transit Now sparking concerns over potential breaches of state laws on protected information and the use of public resources for political campaigning. However, the Washington State Attorney General's office decided not to take legal action, citing a lack of evidence that the data release was intentional. Despite these challenges and controversies, ST3 represents a critical opportunity for Seattle to rethink and reshape its public transportation landscape, potentially setting a benchmark for other American cities looking to expand and improve their own transit systems. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visionary builds.